bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We honor him for his grace. We thank him for all that he does. We honor him because he's faithful. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your help. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for directing us. Hallelujah. We give the praise unto the Lord Jesus for helping us, for guiding us, for sustaining us as we go. Hallelujah. To guide and shape and then help us to do His will. We bless the name of the Lord. I just want to ask you to join us, wherever you are at, in this place or watching. Join us in the spirit of holiness. Join us in the spirit of the Lord Jesus. To let the spirit of Christ speak unto us today. Present and give unto us the word, the word of life. He promised and said that his word are spirit and life. They bring life. They bring life. Every area of our lives where we need the life of Christ, there is nothing else that can bring that life but the word of the Lord Jesus. So I thank you, God, for helping us do thy will, knowing thy will, seeking thy will, understanding thy will, and walking in thy will. Teach us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. I will see this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. I will see this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I will enter. His gate with this giving in my heart. You know, your time has not arrived. That's why you are alive. Amen. My time has not arrived. That's why I am alive. And as long as I am alive, the word of God says that David said, my soul will not forget all its benefit. Hallelujah. Amen. My soul, everything that is inside of me will not forget the benefits. You know, when we talk about benefits, there are things that are added on to you on the top of what you deserve. Hallelujah. The word of God says that to ask you follow and seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all this benefit will be added unto you. Hallelujah. So as I come into the house of the Lord, David say, I was, ah, Jesus. Somebody say, shake, 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 shake. Shake, 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 shake. shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. In the name of Jesus. Shake the devil off. One more time. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake the devil off. Hey. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off in the name of Jesus. Shake the devil off. One more time. Shake, shake, shake. 
Shake the devil off. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. In the name of Jesus. Shake the devil off. One more time. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. In the name of Jesus. Shake the devil off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, the reality of the spirit life is a life of continuous battle. That's the reality. Never believe that because you were fired today, you will be fired tomorrow. Mm -mm. It doesn't work like this way. The Bible says we have to work our salvation with fear and trembling continuously. Because the fire we have, you can have fire at, uh, at 4 a.m. And at 7 a.m. the fire is gone. That's why we always have to press. Hallelujah. We have to always press. And one of the things that the Lord has given us to shake off the spirit of heaviness is what? The what? The garment of praise. Hallelujah. You see, when... Jesus, thank you. When the Lord Jesus came on earth, he himself, the word... He did not escape temptation. Did he? He was, the Bible said he was tempted in every way. You know what I'm saying? When the devil took him to the pinnacle, what did he tell him? Throw yourself off the cliff. This is, this is what? Of what? Suicide. You know what I'm saying? I'm, the Bible says he was tempted in every way. So you name the temptation. Drug addiction, he was tempted for it. Am I lying? The Bible says, the Bible says, <laughs> he was tempted for Ndole. <laughs> the, the Bible says he was tempted in every way. So, do you think that the temptation he went through were the temptation only, only of his time? It was every temptation known unto the flesh of man. Because you see, the devil does not bring temptation as a new way of temptation. It's the same old way of temptation that uh, he, 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 could have said, he recycled. Hallelujah. The last of the flesh, the pride of life, and then the, um, the, the last of the eyes. Hallelujah. All those things, those three elements are the same thing up to this day that the devil used recycle over and over. So we know through Christ that he has defeated all those things so that we can be able to also say no to temptation. You see, I think it was this morning or yesterday. <laughs> it was this morning. I was meditating and it came to my mind one thing. You can, you can, you can make yourself angry against anything. I'm not saying that somebody makes you angry. I say yourself, you can... Like, like, just put yourself in a position of thinking about something that gets you on the nerve. You will make yourself angry. You feel what I'm saying? So I realize that we have definitely the power to say no to sin. Just as the word of God said. Let me put it this way. If you position yourself into what you think that, hey, today I want to fast, let's say, for three days. But before, before fasting, you already imagine how you're going to be hungry. You feel what I'm saying? Because of your imagination, your will will go low. 
When you start imagining that, okay, I'm going to pray for two hours. And then in your imagination, you already think, I, I, I will, will I be able to keep on going? Your imagination that comes prior your will, you need to break it down. I said break it down. Take it down to the captive, to the knowledge of. Amen? The Bible says bring every, not only the thought of the wicked, every thought of us, of everyone, captive. Any thought that is not exalting itself, and exalting the name of the Lord Jesus, must, bring, must be brought When I praise God, when you praise God, when we praise God, we don't praise him because we know. But we praise him because he's worthy. And that comes with the word. This morning he said, it was this morning, he said, in the beginning was the word. And I said, my Lord, we... We, we, have, we, have, we have read this. We know this. He said, no, you don't. I said, ah. <laughs> In the beginning was the word. There are two types of word. The logos and the rhema. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word. And then he told me, he says, Anything you start, if I have not spoken to you, it will not succeed. Because you see, we have started certain things, then we have prayed that the Lord will help us continue. You feel what I'm saying? You feel what I'm saying? We have started many things, and after we have started, then we have remembered God. Let me put it this way. When you build a you build a, a building. If that building did not start with understanding how to finish it, you might build and it will collapse. The word of God says that. The word of God says that the wise man does what? Sits down, look, calculate if you're going to finish, right? The word of God is what helps us know whether we're going to arrive or not. So in the beginning, before it started, the word has to be so that it can be a start. So what is the things that God has spoken to you that you have not started yet? Because I told you last time, I said, when God tells you to start something, in a reality, he has already accomplished it. All he's asking you is to fulfill what he has already accomplished. He told to Joshua, go I will give you Jericho and his mighty men of valor and his mighty king. Hallelujah. He did not tell him that I should demonstrate that you are stronger, then I will show to you that you will overtake. No. He says, I have already given unto you Jericho, his king and his mighty men of valor. So before Joshua started going to war, he already had a victory. So because of that word, he was able to assuredly say, because the Lord has spoken, thus I will do. So, in the beginning was the word. Your children, your marriage, your business, your church, your ministry, your gift, your talent, your businesses, your work, your whatever, when you have finished, in the beginning, what was there? Because when you remember that it is God who said, when you remember that it was written as you should do, then you will never lack of whatever that is necessity for you to accomplish what God said. So in the beginning, the word. So I realize that as we have the same trend and the ability and capacity that Christ put in us in order to fulfill his will, I realize that what is lacking unto us oftentimes is to whether we do like David, Lord, shall I go? Lord, shall I pursue? 
Lord, shall I recover? What is the drive of the word of God that has begun into whatever you have started? Now I see why in those days, people of God who already understood it, in those days I was still, uh, I mean I'm still young, but I was uh, younger. <laughs> Hallelujah. In those days, I would see men of God who would say, no, he's praying about his wife. And I'm thinking, why, why are you praying for a wife? If you see and you want, just take it. What's, what's the need of praying for a wife? I did not understand. And I remember those days that we keep on saying all the time, no, if you want a wife, you have to pray and ask the Lord. And I was thinking, why in the world? It did not make sense. Because for me, if you want a wife, all you have to do is to look at it and then take it. But it's letter that I understood. But I, I understood it. I'm, I'm a dependent. Come on, this. I'm a, I'm a dependent. <laughs> uh -huh. I have understood it at my own expenses. So in the beginning, the word. Because you see, when you remember that it is God who have assigned you to what you have started, your heart will have strength to continue. But when you start, then you remember God to help you continue. You, your, your man will ask you, did, did he send you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But now you have to toil more in prayer and grace because at that time, you have, that, that's why the Bible said, do not be unequally. If the foundation is not the word that push you, eh? Jesus. You will have to toil of every single thing over the limit where you were supposed to do. In the beginning, the word. Can we read from James? Uh, sorry, from John chapter 1, verse 1, please. John. Chapter 1, verse 1. Can we have the word on the screen, please? John chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Hallelujah. Amen. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. When I start something, and then God is the one who has started it. I read again. When I start something, but it is God who started it. Let's say I start, um, I, I start having children, but the first who started it is not me. Hallelujah! It's God. When I start something, but the thing that I start it is God who spoke it first, or who God who told me to start it. Remember, your heart will have strength to continue. You will now be singing this song. Remember the promises you made to us and fulfill them. But you cannot tell God, remember the promise that he did not make. Does it make sense? So a promise is made by word. So if he did not make you a promise, but you say, remember the promise, which one? Hallelujah. So the word that has begun in the beginning is what established every step that you take. If there was no word, you must receive the word before to go. That's why the, uh, what's his name? Uh, King Saul sinned. Because he did not receive the word before he started doing uh, his uh, uh, killing of the, um, acting like a priest. He received the word to be a king, not to be a priest. So what he was supposed to be achieving was clear. The word established him to be a king. And then he called and waited until Samuel for 10 days. 
And Simon said, this is the word, wait. But he heard the word, go. <laughs> and when Simon arrived, the, the, the complaint was, why you did not wait? Because the word was not go, or was not go when you have waited too long. The word was what? Wait until I come. And Samuel arrived, he sees that, uh, you will, you, you, when you read the word, you see that uh, King Saul did not wait, but as soon as he sacrificed, then Samuel arrived. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what it tells me is that when the beginning of whatever we do has not been spoken and established by the word of the Lord, ah, it's better that we let go. In the beginning was the word. If that word was not in the beginning, then there was no beginning. And if there is no beginning, you have nothing to hold on. If there is no word, you have nothing to hold on. That's why the word of God teaches unto us that oftentimes we pray in vain. Because if your prayer that you pray is not based upon the word that God has spoken to you, then the prayer that you pray is in vain. So when the Lord spoke to me this morning, I was as simple as it is, as written as it is, how many times we have started, then we have said, Lord, your help. See, when the Lord will send the disciple out, the word we always said, go, wait, sit, tarry. Are you what I'm saying? There was something always that was preceding the actions in order to fulfill the will of God. In the beginning, for me again, please. In the beginning was the word, mm -hmm. and the word was with God, mm -hmm. and the word was God. And the word was God. God. The same was in the beginning, beginning with, with God. God. Now, you know, oftentimes I talk and I say, uh, if you speak a phrase, and then you say, for instance, I came to church, and this morning I arrived to church. And as I arrived, I came to church. If you speak like this and somebody listen to you, you will say you're mad. You feel what I'm saying? Because the logic of your phrase is after you have said one phrase, you, you, you're supposed to give the continuity of that phrase. So I have came to church. When I arrived, I saw the chairs. But you say, I came to church. When I arrived, I came to church. When I came to church, I arrived at church. But that's what the word of God does. The word of God goes beyond what is normal, what is logical to let us know how it is important that we start nothing else but by the word of God. So that before God will be with you, it must be the word of God. For in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. So before anything God be inside, he ought to be his word inside first. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So if you want to invite God in that presence, it has to be something that has cleaned up the way. Prepare the ways of the Lord. You see, the reality of this, when you read Malachi, the Bible said that the, the word of God will go ahead, which is Elijah, right? And he will do what? Prepare the ways of the Lord. How did he prepare the way of the Lord? He didn't wash at the street, amen? He spoke the word, hallelujah. How? Ah, through who? John the Baptist. So what was preparing the ways of the Lord was the word of God. 
that was announcing that he's coming to be among. That's why Elijah, no, no, no. Uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, say Israel. Give me the name. Isaiah was able to say, as I saw, I saw Emmanuel, hallelujah, be among. That's why he said, I came to fulfill the prophecy. What is prophecy? Word. He would not have fulfilled something that was not spoken. So if you're looking for a fulfillment in your life about something, you must understand or ask first, was it spoken? Other than that, you might wait a long time and wonder why it's not being fulfilled. But let me tell you something. What makes us be able to advance is the certainty that God knows the good plan. Because put it this way. If I have my plan and I drive over here, God has his plan to drive me over here. I may think in my mind that if I continue driving over here, you're going to succeed. But here's the thing. God has good plans. In his plan, it says all things work for to those who love God and who are what? Call according to his purpose. Purpose here is a word that is spoken so that you accomplish it. So the Lord said this morning, in the beginning was the word. As true as is Genesis 1. In the beginning was God in your business, in your affair, in your decisions how did God rise how did he speak how did he convince you how did he say you see somebody can do something and then you look at the same thing you do it and then you fail lamentably are you what I'm saying sometimes people do certain things that succeed but what they do is stupid it's really foolish it has even nonsense but what they do just increase and then you're thinking, ah, let me do. You see, oh, Jesus, thank you. the Israelites, they did not sin because they wanted a king. Hallelujah. They sinned because they wanted a king according to, their, to, the, uh, to others. Amen. Because in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 17, even before they even have the desire to have a king, in the book of Judges, in Deuteronomy chapter 17, the Bible says, that God already told him that when, when the day arrived and you had a desire to have a king, why he called them to be a kingdom? Because he would give them a king. Hallelujah. So he had planned to give them a king already, but they had to have the desire to have a king based on the word. So God had a plan for them to have them a king so much so he had a plan that he calculated the life of Ruth. Amen? Brought out who? David. And David came in. He had a plan. Because when you read the word of God, the Bible says, tells, it tells to Samuel, he says, go. I will, uh, I will show you a king that I have taken for myself. Amen? Hallelujah. It was not a king who prayed that I will anoint him. It's the one that I have taken and chosen for myself. God had already a plan, but his thing, what was the word that began before it arrived? He said this, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. If God has a thought towards you, then he has a word for you. Hallelujah. And that word that he has is that word that must and that will keep us. When the word is there, then God is in that. Now, let me tell you something. God be in that does not necessarily mean that uh, you will have, you will have, I don't know how I call it. Like in the beginning, when God is inside, it does not mean that you will have all and everything. But what it means, you will have the certainty of his presence. That you know that you should not give up. Because as, as much as challenging it is, you know God is inside. 
And because you know God is inside, if you give up, then you have sinned. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word. Please read for me again. In Verse the one. beginning was the word, mm -hmm. and the word was with God, mm -hmm. and the word was God. Mm -hmm. The same was in the beginning mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. By what him? By the word. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. All things. When God makes something, even though it is him making that thing, he does not breathe. He speaks. Although he can breathe. And it will happen. I, I what I'm saying. In the beginning was God. And God said, let it be light. God could have simply thought and it would have also happened. Because he is able to do so. But he's giving us a path. Uh, a, a pathway. A model. As to also use and utilize by saying, you want it to see, you want it to happen, you want to see it, even if you speak the word that I'm not in the beginning of that word, it cannot happen. Continue, please. John chapter 1 verse 3. Mm -hmm. All things were made by him. Mm -hmm. And without him was not anything made that was made. And without him were not anything made that was made. Without him, as much as you pray to see the grace of God, to see the help of God. First question before you start praying, was God in the beginning? Was the word in the beginning? And as I say, now I realize why the devancier, uh, I would call it, the forefathers in the faith, why they said, son, pray before you start something. They were always saying, pray before. Let God speak before you start. Because there are many plans in the heart of man. By what stand? The counsel of God, the word of God. Oh, no, I will do this, I will do that. If I did it this way, and then I do this. And, then, and when we are finished, you, you add like, a, you become like a Jonah. You have a, a expend, a, uh, uh, ex, uh, uh, you, are, you have spent, hallelujah, <laughs> all, your, um, all your savings. When God did not send you what happened, you have to pay your arm. Fair. Your hand transportation. When God sends you like a Philips, he also can take you like a Philip with the spirit. If provision lacks the vision, then God has not provided the vision. I repeat again. If provision lacks in the vision, then God has not provided the vision. For if there are many things that God provides, he also provides the provision for the vision. He said, Paul, he said, Abraham, go. When God tells you go, in that vision he's sending you, he will make sure that you have the provision. Now, now provision is everything. Provision is finances. Provision is people. Provision is health. Provision is help. Provision is, is everything that God will say that you will have in order to fulfill that word. Now, God can speak the word and the provision will not be there. It could be that the enemy also fighting the provision. But you will only pray in that certainty when you know that God has spoken the word first. You see, Daniel, the Bible said that Daniel started praying. Why? Because it was the word. The Bible said that he looked into the word and then he saw the 70 years of the prophecy of who? Jeremiah as he arrived. Then what did he do? He looked and said, ah, this is the basis of my prayer. That after 70 years have arrived, this is what's going to happen. So he started praying, Lord, 70 years has arrived. Because he was the basis of the word. In the beginning was the word. And I realized the Bible says that all things were made by him. 
So as long as it is Christ who started it, then you know it is Christ who wants you to have it. Other than that, it is just the last of your eyes. Hallelujah. All things were made by him. That's the difference between us and everybody else. Because all we have, it is by the grace of God. All we have, it is by the goodness of God. But that goodness must follow you as you have the word on your side. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And if I believe and I trust the word of God, the word of God tells me that there are many plans in the heart of a man. Imagine the plans we have in our heart. Every plan of greatness. Every plan of success. Every plan of opportunity, of open door. We have all plans in our heart. And God says that the end of it is what? Death. Which death? You start it, it dies like, phew, you don't even understand. And yet you have prayed for it, but you have not prayed based on the promise. Does it make sense? It does not die because God was not faithful. It died because it was not where God sent you. Here's the problem. Where God wants to send you is more plentiful than what you think that you want to go to. So it becomes now a failure to really trust God. Because we finally, let, let, me, let me put it this way. I always use that example of a house that uh, we bought. When we wanted to build a house, same experience with you guys, right? One morning I was sleeping, I got up, and I clearly heard the word of God. Build me a house. By the day he spoke, we are broke like a, a rat of a church. <laughs> and I was thinking, how in the world would you want me to build? You know, it is easy to buy a house already built. Hallelujah. Because building a house, it means you have to find the land. In the United States, it's not Cameroon. In the United States, it's not Cote d'Ivoire. In the United States, you don't have land like this. Specifically when you live in area like a Silver Spring, Washington, D.C. Hallelujah. So when you are in Tacoma Park and God said, build a house, you look around. Well, well, which, 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 which? <laughs> in the trees. <laughs> Hallelujah. You become African. <laughs> you start living in the trees. <laughs> That's what they say. There's African lives in the trees. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, he said it, but what he said was not compatible with what I was seeing. It was not compatible with what I was seeing all around me, inside of me, in our pocket, in our fantasy. There was nothing inside that was compatible. But the place that was in my heart was to pray so that we can have our, uh, our um, how call it, it? Uh, the rent. To pay the rent. So in my heart was prayer. Oh Lord, visit us. Oh Lord, provide us. And then as I was praying, then they put a notice of eviction on the door. <laughs> you see, the difference of the Daniel of prayer, the prayer of Daniel, is that prayer, uh, Daniel already had the word to pray on. Hallelujah. He already had a promise to pray on. So when he saw attack, he knows that this is attack. But some of those things that, uh, that happen is not attack. God has blocked it. You know what I'm saying? When God blocks it, and then you have nowhere to go, you will pray. When you finish to pray, the devil will not help you either. <laughs> Are you know what I'm saying? Because it is God who held it. Because he does not want you to go there. But how do you know God held it? Because he did not, he did not tell you in the first place. <laughs> Here's how. 
When you trust God, you can tell him, Lord, thank you for the closed door. You know what I'm saying? The ascent type of door you wanted to enter in. It was wide open. And you say, oh, Jesus, I praise you. As I was saying, when we talk about the house, we were looking for houses. When we saw house, we start fasting, praying. And every tongue came out of the mouth. This is ours. I possess it. I hold it. When you begin to pray, it's gone. But the fire of the prayer that was inside your belly was greater than the promise that God has given. But when you finish, the promise is nowhere to be seen because it was not there. So God held it. But then, as you start now toiling and toiling and then finding your ways, and as you start now looking in the finding of your ways, you remember, but what did God say? That's what happened to us. I told to my wife, but what did God say? He didn't say build a house. Uh, uh, sorry. He didn't say buy a house. We were looking frantically to buy a house. And then we say, ah. He didn't say buy a house. He said build a house. I was telling to my brother, I say, in the mercies of God, he did something, but I'm certain of one thing. If the strength of the faith I had, I invested into it to have a house debt free, we would have built a house debt free. You know what I'm saying? But in the strength of the faith I had, I only, I was telling him, I said, the, the, the Lord looked at us, he had mercy. He let us go. When you build the house, he said, don't take the credit anymore. Uh, you already built the house. <laughs> But you see, in the strength of the faith we had, we could have also called because we have seen God wiping out big depths. Big depths. He wiped. You know, sometimes people preach and they say, okay, your, your debt will be wiped. You say, hey, amen, you don't believe because you know how you're going to be wiped. <laughs> because debt is not wiped like this. It's not on the, on the, what is that? On the board and somebody come with a, a, a he raised it and then, okay, wipe. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. So when people say, yeah, your death will be wiped, you say, amen, but you yourself, you, you think it out. But then we saw God. You chunks of thousands, of several thousands and thousands of deaths. One morning was gone. Balance zero. I say what? <laughs> that's that's when when you do not believe God, you say I can't believe it because you you you, you were not believing anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah! But when you believe God. And you see it, you say, praise God for the promises of God has come true. You start praising Him because you know the Word was in the beginning. Now here's the Word of God. He said, thou shalt lend and not borrow. That's what I know. Now, it can take a form of looking like it is waiting too long. Are you what I'm saying? But it's not the weight of the wealth that is waiting. It is me being built so I can carry that wealth. Did I, do you understand what I said? What God wants to deposit in your hand is not waiting too long. It's not like it's not arriving yet. No. It's rather that God is building you so that you can carry it. Because the wealth that God is going to deposit in your hand is too much. It's too heavy. But God wants you and I to remember what in the beginning the word. Now I can say yes, the word was in the beginning and the word says before I was born that I will not learn. That's what you said. That's not me. Uh, 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 I will not borrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Before I was born, before even I knew you, Jesus Christ, you said, I will not borrow. So at that beginning, I will go and I will ask you, Lord, let your word be fulfilled in my life. 
in the beginning was the word. That's why if you use deceit to build something, <clears throat> you yourself, you know that in the beginning was no, the deceit, not the word. <laughs> she said the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, God's grace is what it means. It means grace. It means you cannot pray to have it and God will give to you. No, 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 no. Grace is what it means. It says you give grace to whosoever is gracious to you. You can pray to have grace, but if grace has not arrived, you cannot blame God because he did not tell you he will promise you grace. You feel what I'm saying? Because grace, that's what it means. But promise, God must hold and keep that promise. Because in that promise, you don't have to pray even for it. The Bible says you have to contend with God. In the book of Isaiah, Chapter 43. He said, come, let us contend together. State your case. That's why you can stand before God. You say, Lord of... Hallelujah. You have told me that by this time next year, I will enter all the territories and possess the land. I claim that land. But when God did not say, Lord, have mercy. Give me the territories. <laughs> You're pleading the case. No, because he did not tell you. Let, let's take the book of Isaiah 43. Let's start from verse 20. Isaiah chapter 43. Let's start from verse 20. We have you on the screen. Isaiah 43 from verse 20. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 43 from verse 20. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I gave, I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Okay. The people I have formed for myself they shall shoot forth my praise. But here's what happened. There is another people. Go ahead. Verse 22. Verse 22. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. But thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. I, do you understand this word? God was the one who established and had a desire to establish Israel. Hallelujah. He was the one who promised that he will be through Abraham a nation. Hallelujah. So he was... But when Jacob entered into that picture, he did not call upon the promise of God. He started acting like a deceiver. You feel what I'm saying? He used his own ways and built his own path and tried his own ways. So all that was in his heart was just before him. He did all of it. And when he finished, God called him by saying, listen, I have a people are set and that people praise me. By you, you do by your own ways. Hallelujah. But now look at what God says. Go ahead. And it says your own way has been wearing me. Now, verse 23. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings. Mm -hmm. Neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifice. When you read in the book of, uh, what was that? Uh, with uh, Jacob and Laban. Uh, when he was uh, with, uh, with Laban. Uh, what was that? Uh, in Genesis. Hallelujah. When you're reading in the book of Genesis, when Jacob was with Laban, can you count for me how many times he offered sacrifice of what he had to God? How many times? Hallelujah. No, no. While he was with Laban, in the house of Laban, producing wealth, developing cattle, and he had all the plans and he was able to spot all the cattle to have his own Tell me how many times he built an altar there to sacrifice unto God. Uh -huh. By the day problem started. Hallelujah. The day problem started. This is the difference with God. When God's word has spoken, even if you go astray, that word does not go astray. 
What he wants you to do is to come to find out whether it was the beginning was that word. If that word was there, then you can tap onto it and demand your blessing. That's why once he realized that, hey, it was the word of God who spoke because Jacob was aware that he was chosen before his brother Esau. He was very well aware of it. And then it was God who spoke to his mother that uh, I'm going to choose Jacob instead of Esau. Now he arrives there. The Bible said, Thou hast thou brought me in the small cattle of thy burnt offering leader. Thou hast thou honored me with thy sacrifice. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor worry thee with incense. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And verse 24. Verse 24. Thou hast bought me no sweet cane with, with money, mm -hmm. neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, mm -hmm. but thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Uh -huh. Thou hast wearied, wearied me with thine iniquity. Hallelujah. Amen. But now, listen very carefully. This is the life of a person who God has spoken in his life. But he did not bank upon the word of God in order to fulfill his life. So he went his ways. He did all he wanted. When he finished to do everything he wanted, God said, Yo, you, you worried me. But see what would happen. What happened is what is the wonder in the kingdom of God. What happens is what is the wonder in the court of God. If the word of God has spoken over you, regardless of what you do, that word remain. Because it says, even if we are unfaithful, he remain what? So he will not stop his word simply because you went astray. No, he will keep that word until you remember that the word is there. And then you will build by that word. In the beginning was the word. So as Jacob, finally in verse what? Verse 25. 25. Uh -huh. I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy, thy sins. What he means? He means that it was Christ himself who decided to die on the cross for us sinners. Hallelujah. So he gave us a room is if the word that is to build you, you left it. And you repent and you come to that word. What happened? Verse 26. Verse 26. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Hallelujah. Amen. Put me in remembrance. You can put God in remembrance of what he said. Not what you said. Hallelujah. So what God said upon Jacob was a word of promise that he will be the first. He will be at the head. He will succeed. He will be called a nation. He will be established. Now he went his ways and when he finally realized that he hasn't honored God with his ways, he came back and God says, now at this time you can state your case. Not pray your case. Because you state it upon the word of God. Thou hast said, Lord. So the Lord says, let us play together. Declare thou. Give me that in the Amplify, please. Verse 26. Is Isaiah 43, verse 26 in the Amplify version. Uh -huh. Remind me of your merits with a thorough report. Remind me of your merits with a thorough report. Let us plead and argue our case together. Let us plead and argue our case together. You see, you're not coming to pray. Oh, Lord. Because over here, you know that you have a standing case upon the word that was spoken and that was said in the beginning. And then do what? State your position. State your position. That you may be proved right. That you may be proved right. When you go in a court and you state your case, you're not begging your case. Hallelujah. You're not begging your case. You are demonstrating that you are right according to the law that was written before your case was brought there. Amen. If you have a case and there is a written law that defends your case, when you arrive before the judge, 
even if with all respect, you will stand and state your case. Because you know that before the judge ruled over your case, there was a law written to give to your case the, the promise, the right to get it approved. So in the beginning was the word. That's why the Lord is reminding us. You know, as I started ministry, I, have di I did see many people who came and who told me, no, you know, you have to use this strategy, this strategy, this strategy, this strategy to do this, to do this, to do this, to do this, to grow your ministry. And all of the strategy that they used and that they said, it was all the strategy that was in the book of men. No, you know, you have to do this way, you have to do that way, you have to do this way, you have to do that way, you have to do this way. None of them ever come on to me to say, I've heard the Lord say, do this way. You feel what I'm saying? There is a difference. There is a fundamental difference when you let yourself be led by God. Even though you know also that there are false, no, not false prophet necessarily, but the Bible called them hold prophet. Hallelujah. The Bible said there was a hold prophet who came who told unto the young prophet that the Lord said that you should not, when actually the Bible said that he was lying. But he himself was also a prophet. So what it means is that it's not because the person says, the Lord says, it means the Lord says either. Hallelujah. After all, you have the spirit of discerning the spirits. But the word of God will resonate with the word that you have received from God. When God comes through somebody and tells you, the Lord says, you will only remember what God has spoken to you. On that promise. Now you can claim that promise. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. If God is in your affair. In your position. In your case. Regardless on how tough and long it takes. You're going to have. Hallelujah. Regardless. Now the question you must ask yourself. What did. What, 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 what is the thing. The source. That had me begin. What I have begun. Remember. It was not a sin for them to have a king. It was sin for them to have a king. According to the desire of. Hallelujah. So the promise that God has spoken to you has to be the drive that makes you have the desire. That's why it says, delight thyself in the Lord and he shall grant you the desire of your heart. Whatever you begin or whatever you have begun or whatever you will begin if God was not in the beginning, drop it. And trust God. This is how you trust God. You trust God by saying, Lord, I recognize I have sinned. Amen. Now I come before your throne and I bring what you said. Hallelujah. Now if it did not say something, then you will have to do like a David, Lord speak, your servant listen. I say Lord speak. Uh, like Samuel. Lord, speak. Your servant, listen. In a way, you will have to have the word that was in the beginning that will keep you on going. Even though God may not be after you counting every sin that you do, but I can tell you, there are some of it, he will slap you with that and a very good. Hallelujah. So what you want to do is to quickly come before the Lord says, Lord, before you take me down onto what I did, I ask you forgiveness. If I do not remember the word that you spoke, then I come with that word. If you do not speak unto me your word, then speak unto me. He says in Isaiah, come, 
Let us, amen, let us argue together. Let us plead together. He says, state your case. Demonstrate your position so you may be proved right. God himself telling you that if in the beginning of your position, his word was there, he cannot deny you. If his word is there, he cannot deny you. If God deny you a case based upon his word that he has spoken to you, then he has ceased to become God or to be God. He cannot, that's why the Bible says it is impossible for him to be unfaithful. Because whatever happened, he remains to what he said. By now, how fast will you remember how fast you're going to drop the things that God has not spoken? And how quick you're going to pick up the things that God has spoken? Or how quick you're going to ask God now to speak to you? And because God still speaks, amen? It's not like a man of God, I think he's a wizard. Anyway, a, a man of God somewhere who has a, a 10,000 church. I said 10,000 church. 10,000 people church. He's very well known. Amen. And what was his name? T.D. Jakes. He said, God. He says, oh, oh, stop all your, I've heard the Lord say. He said, God does not speak. He has ceased speaking. Well, that's not true. Amen. God speaketh and still speaketh. He even speaketh to the atheist. Hallelujah. For God to speak to you, you do not have to be the child of God. For God to speak to you, he has to be God himself. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's why he can speak to donkey. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. When he was speaking, he spoke to um, King Nebuchadnezzar. Was King Nebuchadnezzar his son? Hallelujah. But when, uh, who is his name? Uh, Daniel. Came before King Nebuchadnezzar. What did he say? He said, the Lord has revealed to you. Hallelujah. Same thing with uh, Abimelech. When Abimelech did sin against uh, Abraham, who came in? God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? What did you say? Uh, you are a dead man. <laughs> as, as we were saying, he, he was still in dream and he died there. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I'm certain he, he went, he saw hell. He said, is it, why are we going to hell? Uh, 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 uh. Let me give this back. <laughs> let, me even, let, let, let me even give all the... What is that? Uh, I'm going to give that wife back and I'm going to give what... Um, Hard, hard on to with servants and maid servants. I'm gonna have a little money and like you just take it. You, if you want to take my kingdom, take it. I, I'm gonna go to hell. Hallelujah. I, I'm certain because for him to get up in the morning, tremble like this, say take it and take everything you want. He has to see it. Hallelujah. Same thing with uh, what's his name? A uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh say, "Who is your God?" Myself, I'm God. Moses says, brother, <laughs> what you're talking about, you don't know. He said, who is your God? Myself, I'm God. Brother say, Aaron, come here. Aaron arrived. You knew because that, 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 that was how Moses was speaking. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's like my sister. Talk, 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 talk. <laughs> but you will see, when she read the word of God, the word of the Lord says that in the book of John, chapter 11, verse 1, that the word of God says that she's fluent. But when she asks out the word of God, boom. <laughs> High five. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. 
So he called on to Aaron. He said, Aaron, come here. Aaron, throw your, your uh, uh, throw the, the rod. Aaron came. He was very serious and then like, a, you know, because he knows he himself that God has spoken. So he knew he was coming with power. He arrived. He said, Phil, hey! <laughs> he throws a rod. You want a serpent right there. Oh, look at it. That's all you can do. Balak, Balam, come over here. <laughs> they came. They threw it. It was all Cobra <laughs> Naja. Hallelujah. No one wonder why Pharaoh was not moved. Because he, God does, he do. I, I, I say God does. God does, he does. So he was not moved. But then God said, you're going to go to 10 trial. But when the 10th arrived, you will enter out. I mean, you will exit to enter your promise. And that promise was what God already told them before even they prayed for it. That's the love of God. Before you started praying for something, he already made that thing to meet you. Hmm. I don't know if you see that. Before you start praying for something, God already makes that thing to come your path. The reason you pray is for you to continually trust God. It's not for God to demonstrate his God. Because he's already God. So that's why you pray. So that before you start praying, the Bible says, that he knows the end. That he goes in the end, fulfill the end, and comes in the beginning and say, let us start. When you watch a movie, a good Christian movie, because I need to precise it. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you watch a good Christian movie, biblical based, okay, not a Jehovah Witness movie, amen. A, <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. You watch the movie. The one who wrote the script, if he's sitting with you in the in the room, he will be like this, and you'll be like that. So the one who wrote the script, he knows the end. But he came with you and started the movie for you. You will go through all the steps of that movie. All the emotional. You will be like my brother. You'll be crying. <laughs> this one. I did the Lord call you. You will never leave you. <laughs> Your children, children, and children, children, we know. <laughs> he was sitting at the table. He was holding Kela. And then suddenly, I, 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 I thought he had a rim. How is it that? He had cold. So I was even looking for a paper towel to give him to blow his nose. I look over there, yeah, like a, the chunk of a, of a, of a, I was a tear was going like this. <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking, it's a movie. <laughs> And then he's like, oh, this is so emotional. I say, hey, brother, be a man. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I, how, many, how many times you saw him crying? How many times? Ah, even his own wife never saw him crying. But a movie made him cry. <laughs> This, this is tough. <laughs> Amen. So God knows the end of the story. 
Why are you fretting? Why are you discouraged? Why, why, which devil told you it was too difficult? Which, which one? God knows the end of the story that he wrote for you. And he says it is to give you a future. Whatever that is future, continue until he arrives at the end. Hallelujah. So why are you fretting? When God speaks your future, if you don't see it, knock. Hallelujah. When God speaks your future, if you don't see it, knock. When God speaks your future, if you don't see it, search. Hallelujah. When God speaks your future, if you don't see it, ask. You don't have because you don't ask. But he said, ask and it shall be given to you and your job will be complete. In the beginning was the word. The promise that God has spoken over your life is only that promise that you can use and contend with God. You see, when you read again Isaiah 43, God is saying to us, he says, I'm more eager for my word to come to pass in your life than your sin that have worried me. You know what I'm saying? He said, I'm so eager that I ain't going to, look at Isaiah, he's not even waiting for the God to ask forgiveness. He said, me, myself, I'm getting that sin out. Come <laughs> Are you, are you getting it? God is even more eager to have his... Give me Isaiah 43 again. Start reverse uh, 20, 24. Isaiah 43, 24. Mm -hmm. You have not bought me sweet cane with money, mm -hmm. nor have you filled me with the fat of your sacrifices, mm -hmm. But you have burdened me with your sins. Hallelujah. Amen. So God gives the chapelet, the chronology of all the wrong things that he's been doing. You haven't done this. You haven't done that. You haven't done this. You haven't done that. You haven't got nothing. All you did was to worry me with your sins. But see what God does. You have worried me with your wickedness. Verse 25. Verse 25. Uh-huh. And I, only I. Hallelujah. Amen. How many people? I. I, one. And only he, I. That's why the world of God said that while we were still sinners, Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. To give us access to the throne of grace. In the throne of grace... Grace can be given supernaturally by humility. For he shows grace to the... Hmm. This is deep. Grace is held by God serenely to give to whoever he wants graciously. So he can deny here, he can deny there. But when you enter before the throne of grace, the Bible says to find grace in time of, and find help in time of need. He said, let us... Let us, let us approach boldly to the what? Throne. Approach not, not, uh, come here. Fearfully, thank you. He said, let us approach boldly. Because before you approach, Christ already died for your sins. Amen. L listen. L let me explain this for you because it's important. God will always be against sin, period, okay? You have to understand this. This is a period. There is no, there is no other, other way. However, even your sin cannot prevent God's faithfulness. D do you get it? The Bible said that he is good to what? The just and the 
unjust. He's not bad to the unjust. He's good to the just and the unjust. And he let his rain fall upon the just and the unjust. How do we know he's good? Because while the wicked is cursing him, the wicked still has the breath of life that he gave. How do we know it's good? Why are the wicked, the Bible says, why are they were piercing the one who came? He was still looking at them and he says, What? Forgive them. While they were slapping him and spitting on him, he still carried the cross to die for them. Now, that goodness of God, he said, Once you have relied that goodness, that goodness becomes your own, and because of the blood in which you have repented and be renewed, you can now enter boldly to the throne of grace and say, God, your word says, you have redeemed me, and you have took upon you all my curses. And all the chastisement that was due unto me, you took it. And when you took it, you said at your cross, it is finished. Lord, you said that uh, the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. Lord, you said, because that's all he says about. He says, come argue the case. You argue only with the word. Hallelujah. Lord, you said... If anyone is in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things are new. You say, Lord, that uh, you will do a new thing that I do not know. Hallelujah. You say, Lord, that if I approach to you, if I draw near to you, you will draw near to me. You say, God, that I should put you in remembrance. Your remembrance is faithful, so Lord, I therefore come and I claim. I claim what belongs to me. I claim it boldly, not pridefully. Hallelujah. I claim it boldly to demonstrate to the enemy that it is time to release. The enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy, right? When he steals, he holds it. Hallelujah. But the Bible says when you enter the house of the strong man, what do you do first? Uh-huh. You don't bind with prayer, like in a kind of like a supplication prayer. You don't bind like, in the name of Jesus, please be bound. Oh, I pray that you be bound. No, you don't bind like that. When you enter the house of a strong man, he is not a homosexual, he's a real man. Hallelujah. So when you enter that house, you must act like a man. You enter that house, in the name of Jesus, I commend you. In the name of God, are you what I'm saying? Because you enter boldly and you know that he, whatever he has does not belong to him. With that boldness, you obtain for the kingdom of heaven suffer and the violent take it by. By how? Even a sloth, you know a sloth? Like, <laughs> I don't know if you watch a movie with us, but they didn't, okay. They went in the MVA. And when they arrived, the MVA, all the MVA agents, they were sloth. <laughs> and they were moving this way very slow. And there was a guy who wanted to make a joke. But the problem, if you make a joke, all the agent MVA slot will start laughing. But even the way they laugh, they laugh very slow. So the guy was a very in hurry and he was about to be down. So he said, okay, we need to get the paperwork quickly because we gotta go. 
And the other one came, he tried to make a joke. He said, no, don't make a joke. He, he said, don't make a joke. He made a joke. And then the MVA guy, it took him 10 minutes to get a joke. And after 10 minutes, he was like, ha! Ha! <laughs> By the time he finished to laugh, it was, it was night. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Anyway, so to remind you that the promises of God are always yea and amen in Christ. In the beginning was the word. You enter, you bind, you boldly access to the throne of grace. That throne of grace is made so that you can receive what God has promised you. Hallelujah. That throne of grace is made so you receive, you take what God has promised you. The kingdom of heaven suffer violence. One of the violence demonstrated here was the lady who had that girl who had a demon, demon possessed child. Hallelujah. She came. She arrived. They say, stay over there. The uh, Syrophoenician. They say, no, you cannot access the kingdom. You cannot access the king. You cannot access the throne. You cannot access the prayer. You cannot access the blessing, the promises. Stay over there. She said, I refuse. She entered with violence. She said, I refuse to be behind and to be denied. Even if I'm not a child of Abraham, I know that uh, that one can give grace to the humble. So I'm going to press until I hear from him. She demonstrated violence in faith. She was not simply sitting on her sidewalk. Hallelujah. Amen. Even the guy that was sitting there, the blind. He heard Jesus passing by. He said, Jesus, son of David, have, have, have mercy upon me. What did I tell you? Be quiet. The Bible said when he heard, be quiet. Hallelujah. It's as he tells him, scream. <laughs> Louder. That's how your mind must be. Because here's the thing. He knew with certainty that he cannot remain blind while the master is there. Say, I cannot remain broke while Jesus is in my boat. I cannot remain broke while Jesus Christ is in my boat. I say, I cannot remain broke while Jesus Christ is in my boat. Because that's the thing. It is by playing with the spiritual authority and spiritual principle that we have remained broke many, many years. God says, take it. And then we say, oh Lord, whatever you give me, I will be content with Make me not rich. Make me not poor. Just give me food every day. I remember when I was young, I was a uh, Catholic, uh, how do I call it? Enfant de coeur. Huh? My servant. My servant. We always come in line with the white robe. Gloria, Gloria. In a Gloria, oh Lord, make us not be rich, make us not be poor, give us the food of every day. And then we thought that was sound. We thought that was that was that was that was that was that was pure. That was that eh? That was humble. That was dumb. Literally dumb. 
because God gets Abraham. Get out. I'm going to give you a land. Abraham gets out. Oh, Lord, give me just a one sheep and then one goat. No. No. Not God who told you, asked him to create the world. It was he who made the world, did everything, and told you, dominate over it. Now, here's the problem. After you finish to pray the glory, yeah, you are serving God and you are broke. I, I feel what I'm saying. Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ was not broke. When he was going to eat, he was going to eat in the house of the, of the, let me explain again so you understand correctly, so you don't confuse it. Christ wants you to, to forsake sins. He wants you to, to pursue after righteousness, after holiness. You must be holy. You must be sanctified. Amen. But after you have pursued after sanctification and holiness, it gives you in order to build his kingdom. Not so that you can be proud and say, I have it. I remember we went in the seminary. I said, I want to be priest. I arrived in the seminary. Everybody was um, having, you know, uh, anyway. So we were there. All my, all my, uh, age mate, and you know, that generation, they all became a curé, uh, a cardinal. Uh, you know, they're, they're all like, they are boss boss in the Catholic church. But many of them are regretting that they would have been married. You know what I'm saying? And why do I, they are regretting? Because when God did not speak to you to do his will the way you want to do it, when you do the will of God the way you want to do it, you always go back. You know what I'm saying? So the word of God does not ask you to pursue after riches. No. The word of God says that the riches will pursue after. Let me read again. The word of God says, in your going, you shall be. You shall be what? Bless. In your coming, you shall be. Bless. In your staying, you shall be. Bless. But what's the condition for it? Amen? It's to obey his word. It's to seek his kingdom first. It's to seek his righteousness first. It's to make sure that your heart is circumcised so that you are not seeking the blessings of God, but you are seeking the heart of God. But when you truly saw the heart of God, do you really believe that God is a bad father? Hallelujah. He said, look at the lilies of the valley. Your heavenly father, he clothed them. And the cloth he put on them is even more glorious than the one that Solomon had in his full glory. And yet, he clothes them, he comes in the morning, and then in the night he dies. You feel what I'm saying? He says, truly look at the bird of heaven. They do not toil, but he finds food for them. How much more your heavenly father. That's why he has been brought from the Elohim, from the El Shaddai, from the uh, Adonai to father. So when you tell and speak and call him father, then you can receive what belongs to a son. I read again. In a big, I see in the big, in the in the in the in the, in the beginning, people were calling the Lord not Father. No one has called him Father. Amen. They were calling him Jehovah. Amen. Lord. Yahweh, Elohim. Are you what I'm saying? 
then when he came, he revealed himself as a father. And then we were now called sons. Hallelujah. But in the Old Testament, they were called servants. Hallelujah. The servant does not inherit of the... Hallelujah. It's only when Jesus Christ arrived that the first time he taught to the disciple, he said, when you pray, start by acknowledging who is your God. Our Father. Does it make sense? Who art in heaven, our Lord be name, that kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Hallelujah. So as the will of God is being established in your life, the beginning of it is the word. Whatever you start, make sure that the word of God was in there. Or you who are not yet married, I tell you from the word of God, the reason why Adam received a wife is because Adam was in a garden. Amen? He was in the garden, meaning he was in the presence of God. He was doing the of God. And the Bible says, whosoever finds a wife has found a good thing and has ob obtained what? What? This is important. The husband is not a favor to the wife. It's a wife that is a favor to the husband from That's why when you don't see God properly, you obtain a lion. Hallelujah. And now you live in a house with a lion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh -huh. And now you are in the house with a lion. Now you pray, oh Lord, convert the lion into a cat. He ain't going to work. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you're not yet married, your prayer, first thing, is to have in your heart the kingdom of Christ. To follow Christ. And when you truly know Christ, then you can ask him to give you favor. Hallelujah. You see, ask favor before to ask the wife. Say, Lord, I want favor from you. So he will look among all his uh, daughters. And then he will look among all of them. He will say, but this one, this one will fit you. This one is more than you. But because of favor, I will take that more to give you. So you will have more. That's favor. If you are not married, do not want to be married. Want to fulfill the ministry of God in your marriage. Because your marriage is not yours, but it's God's ministry given to you to honor him. Hallelujah. If you don't have children, pray to be a good steward of the inheritance of God. If you don't have a job, because they are sent a job that I curse. And I, I, is that what you yeah, curse? I was about to say malediction. The certain job that I curse, when they arrive in your life, God goes out by the window. If you don't have a job, don't pray to have a job. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, give me a job, give me a job, give me a job. No. Lord, give me favor and bring the work that will make me worship you. Hallelujah. If you don't have business, don't pray to have business. 
praise that the Lord will cause you to start to expand his kingdom by giving you what is necessary in order to fulfill. Pray to have the word of God at the beginning. Seek the word of God at the beginning. And let that word establish you. And as the word of God establish you, you will truly say, God is in my boat. If you have skipped the steps and you have went ahead of God and now you are seeking the help of God, I can only tell you what the word of God says. Repent and turn away. Hallelujah. That's all. Repent and return to him. A brother to finish. Don't to me, he said, I gave him money and I told him, I want you to use that money to, to open a center. So they gave me all the list of all the items to buy. I said, no problem. I went to the bank. I made a wire. I said, use all, it was a lot of money. And I told him, take that money and open the center based on all the list you gave me. He opened, he took the money and went, he bought from the list, like it was, let's say it was a list of like a, like 15 or 10 items that he gave. Out of those items that he gave, he bought three of it and the whole money was finished. And I said that, but what happened? He said, no, we were looking among the list we gave you, but the list we gave you was, was um, the list of what we have locally. And when we started looking outside, we saw that it was a 10 times expensive. And, and, I, and I said, and you took the decision on yourself to take that faithful money I gave you to buy three out of 10 or 15. And then he said, I, I want money to pay the custom for one of the high price thing I bought that is stuck at the custom. I said, huh? <laughs> So not only you did this, did this, and then you want money. I told him, I give you 10 days. If you do not solve that issue, I will come like a flower. <laughs> and then he told me after, he said, that he realized how many people just like that can lose destiny helper. Just by doing one stupid thing. I say yes. Just one stupid thing and he's gone. And he said when he realized that, he called his wife. And they went to God. They repented for lack of wisdom. Lack of understanding. And they greatly repented and cried unto the Lord. And what God did, because they were true, repented, true repentant, he Touch the heart of somebody, and the person paid the money to clear out the custom. And meanwhile, God touched my heart to forgive him. You feel what I'm saying? But, and then I told him, Quand le serpent t'a mordu une fois, que tu vois le ver de terre, tu te méfies. <laughs> Once you be bitten by a serpent and you see a worm, you be careful. So I told him, I gave you grace once. Don't think that you have grace every day. And then I told him, let this error serve you as a warning. Because he has been witness of how I dis discard, cut off. Those who were even more worthy than him. He been witness how people who came who was truly worthy according to their social status. I look at them. I smell them. I, I, I say, you have, you have blood in your eye. <laughs> you, you know what it means? <laughs> it's an evangelist who gave me that word. He said, in Cameroon, when they say you have blood in your eye, yeah, your it means your eye cannot see money to pass. <laughs> I read. You just said, suck it. 
Every opportunity, you take it. Even if Jesus is against it, you take it. Uh -huh. Blood in your eye. Amen. So, just to finish is that, as we were speaking, he told me that the recognition, not before me, but before God, of his own sin. What was the sin? Lack of wisdom to handle the finances I gave him. But you see, this, somebody else wouldn't have seen it as a sin. He would have seen it as a mistake. That's what I'm saying. But that mistake would have brought you down. Because the one who is favoring you is not me, it's God. And then I told him, if God takes it out of my heart, it means you're gone. Hallelujah. So since God is the one who, who has the heart of men in his hand, you better go to God to ask favor. Amen? So that men can have favor towards you. Let the word of God be the beginning of everything. Thank you. Whatever you ask, I want you to simply remember that word as you pray with me. That the word of Christ be the beginning of everything that you do. John 1. 1. In the beginning was the word. What did God tell you? If he did not tell you, ask him, he will tell you. Because when the day arrives and challenge arises, you can now tell God, you have said, so and so, this is why I stood. So I claim. But if you don't, if you don't have that word and challenge arise, you cannot say, God, you have said. You can only plead for his mercy. But remember, mercy belongs to God. Meaning he can give, he cannot give. You do not want to play in that pool of domino, of gambling. You want to play in, you want to be in the pool of certainty. To know that you have the promises that you can call on and call him to remember his promises. That's why in the beginning was the word. That's why nothing was made except through him. That nothing that was made was not made but by him. Your future has to be by the word. If you seek wisdom, I plead thee, do not seek wisdom from the books or the textbooks of men. Your wisdom is found in the word of God. You want to know how to direct your affairs or how to direct your businesses, look the word of God. You want to know how to lead, look at the word of God. You want to know how to be a husband, look at the word of God. You want to be a husband or a wife, you want to know how to be a wife, look at the word of God. You want to know how to do businesses, look at the word of God. You want to know how to lead, look at the word of God. You want to know how to live, look at the word of God. Let the word of God be at the beginning of your start. For the word of God says, if you are built upon the rock, there will come a day where there will be a storm, but you will not be destroyed because you are built upon the certainty of the rock of the word of God. Anything that God has not spoken in your life cannot remain. But anything he has spoken in your life that the enemy attempt to take away by the word of God, you will take it by violence. Let the word of God be the only source. Let the word of God be the authority over your life. Your decisions must be by the word of God. Your breathing must be by the word of God. Your praying must be by the word of God. Your singing must be by the word of God. Your desire must be by the word of God. The word of God has to be your solid foundation upon which you can build and live. 
You want to know who you are in this life? Look at the word of God. You want to know what is your future? Look at the word of God. You want to know what are the plans of God for your life? Look at the word of God. You want to know what is your purpose in life? Look at the word of God. You want to know how to build and advance? Look at the word of God. You will be amazed of all the promises that he has given. Let the word of God be the beginning of your life, of your plans, of your desires. Let the word of God be the beginning of everything you build so that you can build upon a solid, certain, and true rock. If you have started without the word of God, there is room for repentance. But the word of God says, he's going to blot out your transgressions. He's going to blot out your sins for his own name's sake. And he tells you, now bring back the word of God and let us start. He says, bring back my word and let us discuss. Bring back my word and let us plead. Remind me your case and let that case be built upon my word, saith the Lord. Let the word of God be the soundness of your life. Let the word of God be the desire of your heart. Let the word of God be the thoughts of your mind. You are struggling with a wicked thought. Let the word of God be in you. Your thoughts are not corrected. Let the word of God be your thought. Your mindset is not clear. Let the word of God be your mind. Your desire are corrupted. Let the word of God be your desire. And thou shall be fulfilled. I pray that the word of Christ that gives life and life in abundance brings life in your heart, life in your spirit, life in your mind, life in your soul, that your entire being be sustained by the word of Christ. For whatever he says, that he has accomplished. I pray that you be established in the word, by the word, through the word, with the word of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That you breathe the word. For he told unto Joshua, he said, let not this word depart from your mouth and thou shalt prosper and have good success in every thing you do let this word never depart from your mouth speak the true word of god he has spoken to you for this word shall give you future shall give you life and life in abundance